In this question, we're given three discrete time signals. So we're given a ramp, a unit ramp, we're given a shifted ramp, and we're given a shifted step. So three functions, x, y, and z. And we're being asked to plot them. So because they're discrete time signals, we have the independent variable n rather than t, and that's an integer. So I've prepared the axis here. So a unit ramp, you might think, oh, that just looks like that. But actually, that, that would be u, sorry, um, r of t. A discrete unit ramp would look very similar, except it would be discrete. It would be 0 for all negative time, 0 at t equals 0, or n equals 0, and then it would increase linearly. But only at discrete instances of time. So it's only defined for n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, etc. It's 0 or undefined for um, values of n which are not integers. So that's our um, unit ramp. That's the first signal. The second signal is a unit ramp, but it's shifted by six uh, samples or six units of time. So we want the value of n where that argument equals 0. So n equals 6. So at n equals 6, that's when our ramp starts. So it starts going up at that point. At all values before that, it's 0. So this value has to be 0. That's where the ramp actually starts. So we can draw a discrete time signal as something like that. OK, so let's clean this up. So that's my second function. So that's my unit ramp, but it's been shifted by six samples. And here I have a unit step, and it's been shifted by six samples again. So again, this argument needs to be 0. So n minus 6 equals 0, n equals 6. That means that's where my unit step actually starts. Let's clean that up. So our unit step starts at n equals 6. And because the amplitude here is 6, it's not a unit step, it's a step with an amplitude of 6, because it's 6 multiplied by 1. So that's my first value. That means before that, it would be 0. Because the unit step is 0 for all negative values of time. And a discrete unit step um, actually um, is 1 at n equals 0. So here it's 1 at n equals 6. And then again, 7, 8, 9, etc. Now we don't have to draw these stalks. They look like lollipops. We don't have to draw it that way, but it's just much easier um, to visualize in this way. So here we have a shifted step, here we have a shifted ramp, and here we have a ramp function. So those are our three signals, x, y, and z. The next signal, or the next question, gives you this composite function where you have r of n minus r of n minus 6 minus 6 u of n minus 6. So you notice that this happens to be that, that's that, and that's that function. So we're simply subtracting these three functions. So again, do it sample by sample. So let's look at n equals minus 1. You have 0, minus 0, minus 0, and that'll give you 0. 
the next sample is 0, minus 0, minus 0, and that'll give you 0. Then you've got 1, minus 0, minus 0, that'll give you 1. Then you've got 2, minus 0, minus 0, and that gives you 2. 3, minus 0, minus 0, that'll give you 3. So what you're doing is you're increasing n, so you're going along the n-axis from minus infinity towards infinity, and you're taking it sample by sample. So where are we up to? 4, minus 0, minus 0 gives you 4. Now it's getting to the interesting part. 5 minus 0 minus 0 is 5. But this can't go on forever because now we've got 6 minus 0 minus 6. So 6 minus 6 is 0. So we're down here again. Now the next sample would be 7, wouldn't it? So we'd have 7 minus 1 is 6, minus 6 is 0. And then you'd have 8 minus 2 minus 6 is 0 again. So you can probably see that we have a pattern here. We have a unit ramp that goes up until n equals 6. So the last point at which the ramp exists is n equals 5, but at n equals 6, because the unit step started at n equals 6, it goes down to 0. So this is the shape of our composite function. And we can find the energy of this signal. So if we call this x of n, then we can find energy of x by simply adding from n equals minus infinity to infinity x of n squared. So in this case, what are we adding? We're adding 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. So we're just adding these values squared. So that's the total energy for this signal. So that's the final answer.